these are true reflections of Homer, a pretty special person, successful. He would call him that today. He was not an important elected official. He was not a well-known celebrity. He was not a rich CEO, nor did it seem he was even needed. In the mid-50s, 1950s, after heart trouble, needing a warmer climate, and wanting to do mission work, he moved to Texas, Westlake, Texas. He knew no one there, and of course, Mexico was just across the river. The Mexicans were very poor. I suppose most of us knew that, but we really noticed. I visited him once. He drove me around and showed me places. And I remember seeing a very young girl playing naked in front of a small square shack. Girl. Homer saw a need, and but few others noticed. Homer lived in a trailer. He didn't have heat, and it got cold at night, but few noticed. The Border Patrol got to know Homer. They trusted him, they knew him, as they saw how he lived and the work he was doing. We crossed the border into Mexico and back easily without being thoroughly checked. He prayed, then delivered food. He prayed, then delivered clothes. He prayed, then delivered hope. He prayed, then delivered change to their lives. For years, he delivered their needs and the good word, but few noticed. He didn't pastor a big church. He didn't pastor a small church. He didn't pastor any church. But I remember once, at a Wednesday night prayer meeting, during one of those rare times we returned to Wisconsin, several men stood up and gave their testimonies. I can't remember what any of them said, but then Homer stood up. He didn't say anything spectacular either. He just told them how poor his new friends were and how he was trying to help them. He spoke for a while and asked if we might be able to share or donate anything, clothes, food, he sat back down, and everyone wanted to hear more, so he stood up and continued. He spoke for the full service. There was no prayer meeting that evening. No one left early. The pastor never spoke either, but a few others. His faith was big, but he did small things, and a few others. Decades later, as he got older, he moved in with us back in Wisconsin. I had a few rentals and charged him nothing. He insisted on paying though, so he did. Forty dollars a month would come in the utilities. We could afford that. He stayed in that small lower unit a number of years. I learned a lot. I uh, saw him daily. I was not a benefit to him, but rather he was a benefit to me. You might say that we were one big happy family. We seldom knocked. I remember once walking in on him and saw him in his bedroom on the floor, on his knees, at his bedside, praying. He didn't hear me or see me, so I quietly backed out, shut the door. He was a man of prayer. He read his Bible continuously. We spoke often. He carried his Bible everywhere and rarely left home without it. He walked to the other end of the town and back twice a day for exercise. He loved God's world, but a few noticed. He continued his normal routine, his daily Christian walk, and a few noticed. One day as I was driving down Main Street on the far sidewalk, I saw him. As I stopped for a red light, there he was up ahead, walking the same direction as I, who could forget that distinctive walk, a little hunched over, but a deliberate walk, as if he always knew where he was headed. Few noticed. As I got closer, as I looked closer, of course, at his side, under his arm, in his hand, was that same familiar Bible. He didn't see me. I didn't sound my horn to wave. I just looked ahead and smiled, thinking, that's over. On the sidewalk were other passers by. I wondered if they too saw his Bible. But few noticed. 
Thank you. 